Because this is such a large print, we're going to be using the giant paper cutter. And I'm just making a bit more room so that it can sit on the table. Working on a table this size does have uh, some limitations. Um, using this paper cutter, it leaves a little bit on the s on uh, each side, so I have to like go in and just rip that off. If the floor is clean and a fresh sheet of glassine paper is set down, possibly two sheets. Um, you can do all of this on the floor and uh, you'll have a better time cutting with the paper cutter. Here I'm just cutting off a bit of the jagged excess so that it looks nicer for the customer. A crucial step is successfully flipping the print without creasing it or bending it in any way. Now I need to determine how I will roll it up. It's best to do it the longest way and it does fit, so I'm going to do it the longest way. This particular print is a limited edition, so if we were to actually ship this out to a real customer, I would have already affixed a serial number sticker onto the back of this print before rolling it up. It'll take a couple of tries to get the size of the roll correct. It can't be too big that it won't fit into the tube, but it can't be too small that it'll jumble around in there during transit. For this trial and error, I recommend using washi tape, blue masking painter's tape, or any other kind of tape that comes off of paper easily. At this moment, I'm comparing the diameters and I've determined that the what I've rolled is too big to fit into the tube. I think that's a good size so just to double check I need to actually make sure that it fits in there and that it fits just snug enough so that I can fit the certificate in there as well. Since I'm comfortable now with how it is rolled, I will affix at least two more pieces of tape on either end so that there's no stress point and this is to prevent any creasing or bending in the print.
The next step is to fill in the negative space with bubble wrap. This is especially important for international orders where the air pressure can change significantly. We want to prevent any scenario where our print gets damaged from air pressure changes. Customers who order limited edition prints also receive a certificate of authenticity. In this example, I'm using a, a test certificate that I frequently use um, for formatting purposes. Uh, so it may look a little weird here, but it is the same paper and size and it does have the sticker on it. Limited edition orders also receive some stickers. and they receive a thank you card signed by Jeff. It may or may not come with a coupon or a discount or something like that. We do tend to change it up a bit. And these envelopes get their own special sticker. For an actual customer, we will also write their name on the card and the envelope in our own handwriting to show our appreciation. Since every order will be a different size, it is up to you to determine the best way to fit all of this extra stuff into the tube as to not interfere with the quality of the print.
It may seem excessive to add more tape to this, but if I were a customer and I received my shipping tube just like this without any extra tape or sealing, I, I would feel a bit concerned. So just personally, I like to add more tape and here I am pretending that I am sealing up the package even more and adding tape. 